Hi friends. So today I invite you to paint this little guy with me. It's uh, this kind of fall mountain scene. I didn't know what it would look like when I started. I was just going landscape. So you can kind of see my process. You'll notice there's fun drips and stuff when we get there. And what we needed to do this was the half inch angle brush, I believe. Quarter inch angle brush. There we go. Uh, the little kind of thin, thin tipped brush, some paper towel, a glass of water to rinse your brushes. And then these colors, um, this is a magenta. I really, I love, I use it a ton. It's a little bit translucent. You can tell because you can see the lines there. This one is really liquidy. Any of them with this pointer top are more fluid and liquid. And then we will also use this sapphire blue, which is very opaque, teal, blue lagoon, blue lagoon teal, which is also very opaque. We have uh, sap green. This is just carbon black. Really, whatever black you have should be fine. It doesn't have to be carbon. There's Mars black. There's a few other ones. Um, yellow oxide we're using. Again, that's fairly opaque. The celadon, which I call tan and then a white. Um, for this I used the Titian white. You can see there it is a little translucent. Uh, again, by all means, if you have similar colors, just pick similar colors. Or, you know, you can assign different colors to mean, you know, if you want all your blues to be purples, shades of purple. Do it. It's up to you. Go for it. It's your painting. Uh, I'm just you know, helping facilitate it for you. So uh, this is gonna be an intuitive landscape. So it's kind of playing, you'll see, I started with this intent to try to make mountain silhouettes with torn paper. It fails. So that's kind of what that beginning part is. So okay, I'm join you can do something like this. Um, so we'll do it together if you want. At this point, you should have seen the little intro to the video that shows you <laughs> what this painting will look like, because currently I have no idea. We're doing some kind of landscape. So whenever we pick colors, it's best to at least keep them kind of in the same family-ish. So I'm gonna go some yellow ochre, which is this guy, Blue Lagoon. Blue Lagoon Teal. You're always gonna want probably a little bit of black and then some white green. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna try to keep this under 40 minutes, that's my goal. So we'll see, friends. Let's go. So to start, I'm taking just a piece of, of paper and I'm just gonna rip it in so it's jagged. There's no right or wrong way to do it. You just rip it so that it's not even. And then we'll lay that down and we'll take, we don't need that brush. I'm gonna use an angled, kind of a thicker angled brush. It doesn't have to be this exact kind of brush, but a similar, a similar one is good. You're going to want a paper towel because dabbing your brush is hugely helpful. So I'm taking just a titch of white. You can see it's kind of wet. It's a little bit of, there you go, kind of wet. And then just a hint of the yellow. We're just gonna do this, see what this does. So it's not super wet. I'm gonna try to keep it fairly dry. Um, just because I'm planning to do this all at once. And so I need parts of it to dry as we go. And you know, the more water you add, the longer it takes to dry. So we're just lightly doing that. Not really sure. That's fun. Go over it. And then we'll face it down and we'll put some green there. So again, it's just some water and some color. You can see it's kind of runny, but it's not too wet. If I move it like this, it doesn't drip down on the canvas. So that kind of gives you an idea of, you know, the um, texture. That doesn't feel like the right word, but you get what I mean. So we're just throwing some green down there. 
Right now, honestly, all I'm doing is just setting an interesting base. Um, in any of my uh, intuitive pieces, you just kind of have to start. So we'll put some vertical lines. They don't have to be straight across at all. Here, we're mixing in as we go down the line with the teal. Just a line horizontal. However, it doesn't have to be straight across. There's no wrong way. <laughs> That's huge to remember. There's no wrong way. You're, you're doing it right. So we just took that green and as we went down, or the teal, and then as we went down, we mixed it and then mix it. And if it's getting too dry on you, just throw in a little bit of water. But like I said, we're working with a fairly thin layer of paint and minimal water just to make it stay dry easier. In this, we're just bringing that line up this way for a bit. The torn paper thing clearly didn't really do very much <laughs> as I had hoped, but that's okay. So next what we're going to do is get, this is a liquid, so it's already more runny than you can see these other colors are. It's okay if yours isn't. Just add some water, or if you'd like, add matte medium if you are, um, you know, that familiar with painting. But what we're gonna do then, this is still a bit damp in those places, so we're going to take this and just take some of these liquidy bits of the darker green. And you can see we're just letting it drip. Just let it drip, do what it does. Paint's very fun. Painting is very fun when you just let it let it be and it'll do what it does and you know, it, it's fun to just embrace the process of, of unknowing because you know what this will look like because you've, you've seen the title of the video. I don't. So we're kind of embracing the unknown together. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of black. Remember, it, it can be very overwhelming. Um, contrast. The contrast is great. We want it, but it's worth just paying attention to, you know, how much you're adding. I've just moved it um, 90 degrees, so now we're putting some lines, just kind of letting them do what they do. And there's no right way. It doesn't have to make this many lines, we're just simply adding some drips. That's all. And then if you tap it, it'll go past that little line that it was creating. And it'll drip all the way down. Cool, so that's fun. You'll notice I keep moving it different directions and turning it. That's very normal. It's just me kind of figuring out what it looks like from different angles and waiting for something to sort of jump out and tell me what it, wa <laughs> what it wants to be. So this is interesting. Um, we're going to take a smaller brush now. And I'm mixing the yellow ochre and the white. So it'll make that slightly, um, there we go, that slightly lighter green. I know green. It'll make that slightly lighter yellow. <laughs> I'm just coloring in these little sections here. You'll notice it's pretty um, messy. Some of these areas are still wet. And when they are, you'll see how they bleed together like that. If you don't touch those edges, It'll stay pure um, with the yellow, but otherwise the wet will kind of blend into the new color, which is fun. I just added some more of the full 
yellow. Just a brush of that on the top of these guys. And if you're ever thinking, why is she doing that? The answer is, I don't know. <laughs> I just am. I'm just painting. That's the beauty of it. So, all right. Fun. So I'm touching this. It's not quite dry yet. So I'm gonna take a little of this paper. And you'll see it lightened that, but it also dried it up quite a bit. So we're gonna move it this way to allow that to dry a little more and then we'll play with it. So down here, we're just gonna make some patterns. So we'll just do a circle here. And it picks up a little of that black, great. Circle here. A lot of these early stages in intuitive painting is honestly just developing a background to put everything else on. So it gives you this very interesting depth. So, some circles. Mix the teal and the ochre. And it gives us this different shade of green than we'd been working with previously. It's a little more minty, maybe? And we'll just put that by this yellow here. So it's a decent amount of paint, but not, um, not too runny and not super thick. Some of that takes a little getting used to. But ultimately, we just added green there. That's it. I'm playing with layers in fairly horizontal lines because I know that if eventually I'm wanting a landscape, um, it's likely it'll have a, a horizon line at some point. So I'm kind of catering to find that whenever, whenever it shows up to me. So, is this dry yet? It's pretty dry. Yeah, that'll work. So now I'm bringing in some white, but you'll see it got a little bit of gray on it. That's not on purpose, it just did, that's fine. And so we're gonna make Sort of, um, it's kind of like a fish shape, I guess. It's not supposed to be a fish, it just is the shape I ended up making. I'm just a, kind of describing it as that so you have an idea of what shape you're kind of going for. And it's like this little fish with a little swoop. Swoop. And picked up some more white but with a hint of that yellow. And we'll make another little swoop here. And I'm starting with the edge <clears throat> and then pulling the color into the center like this, you'll see. So if you lighten the pressure on your brush as you go to the center, like press down and lighten up, press down up, and kind of lift it as you go, then you'll find it'll give you this little gradation. And there. Turn it around again. What have we got? Still have no idea. All right. Feeling more of this blue. So we're just filling in this part here. It's still a little damp. You can see because it'll pick up a hint of that black, but not a lot. We're just putting a, I don't know, rectangle guy, rectangle buddy, little baby rectangle buddy, and um, maybe a rectangle buddy here. Yeah. I'm calling them rectangles. They're really just kind of uh, <laughs> like painty, painty spots because they don't have to be a rectangle. It's just giving you that 
general, you know, shape you're working within. Uh, I would say it's best if you don't try to make it an exact shape. Just kind of let it be uh, that, and then it'll uh, develop its own presence and have a more painterly feel anyway, if it's kind of messy. So it's great to embrace, embrace that imperfection. You know, it might feel like, oh, what is this? I don't know. <laughs> so we added some white here. So what I'm gonna do is take my little brush and I'm taking some white and making just a little circle up here. If you ever get too much water, all you have to do is touch it with your brush. It'll absorb into the bristles if the brush is dry already and absorb and pick that up and then you brush it off and you can pick it up Painting is really intimidating until you just kind of play with it and then you're like, oh, this isn't a mystery. Anyone can paint. I mean, if you want to get like really, you know, proficient and talented and, and sell your stuff or whatever, then that'll take some practice. But if you just want to paint, you can paint. <laughs> you can make a painting. It doesn't matter. I'm not special. I mean, I'm as special as, as every other, you know, human is special. So we added some ochre into there. We made this little circle. A circle always can give you a moon or a sun or a sunset, whatever. It's a pretty easy cheat <laughs> um, when you're trying to make something turn into something. I've used a bit of this magenta one of my favorite colors that shows up a lot in my work. Oh, I should have put it on my on my buddy here so you can see it. All right, so this is just wax paper. You don't need to use wax paper. I'm using it to give you more of a clear back because otherwise it's all this painty nonsense, which is hard to see what I'm using. So, um, mixing some of this pretty magenta with the, I'm gonna call it tan, because it looks like tan. The Curldian, Cerulean, Cel Celadon. I am way off. So all I'm doing is going around this circle we created. And look, it's messy. It's imperfect. It's not a perfect sphere. It's fine. So I'm added more water than paint right now because I already put a decent amount of paint on the canvas. So I've just added some water to my brush so that I can gently go along the lines here and basically just filling in this space. And I'm just gently going over this yellow part by just picking up the magenta I already have on the canvas, mixing it with a bit of water, and then that just allows me to keep pulling that color with me over here onto the other sections without bringing too much pigment. And when you go light like this, it also dries faster. So this will be... Um, this process a bit is a bit of an experiment for me because I usually have longer drying periods. So I'm trying to just go so that we can all do this together in one, in one sitting without having to have breaks. So I'm just straightening up this circle a little bit. But again, um, it's very easy to set an expectation of what you think something should look like or, you know, a circle has to be super correct for it to be a circle or whatever. And that's not the case, just let it be. And I'm not sure what we're gonna get. It kind of works. Little green. So I've mixed the, our magenta and our teal and it gives me this, um, this purple color here. And I think that's gonna work for what I want. 
So back this way, what I'm doing is simply lining the blue that's all together now with that purplish color. My blue is still a bit wet. I'm guessing yours might be too. It also might be dry. Either way, you're, it, it's fine. The whole thing about this process is you're following along, but it will still be very much your own because paint just does its own thing. You know, this isn't a paint by number, so you're still very much, <laughs> you're in control, you're painting it, you're making this. And there's nothing wrong with it. If you want to take something and go in a different direction, or if you see something that I don't in the shapes and you want to develop those shapes, go for it. You know what you're doing, you got it. So I added a little more purple here. And you'll see I'm just starting in one side here and kind of bringing it out more with a, with a very even kind of stroke. And as it's going, because this is still a little wet, it's picking up some of that color that's been there and it's pulling that along too. All right, so moving it this way. And bringing in some more of that purple. And we're going to, we're gonna bring this guy in like that. So it's kind of meeting here with that V and then picking up the rest of my little circle friend there. And we'll take that off the side. This is still pretty wet, that last circle I made. So I'm just bringing that blue back into the purple. And all that's doing is automatically giving us a gradation in color. So it doesn't have to be all purple or all blue. Whenever we mix that subtle shift, it automatically looks like you know what you're doing. <laughs> it looks like, like it's planned, like, ooh, yes, these are highlights. But really, you know, you're just letting the colors kind of mix together as you go. So I've decided to make these sort of a hill look. So I'm just building that out more. So bringing in a little more of the light blue or the teal on the edges there. There we go. Okay, so that's interesting. And if your water gets kind of gross and too, um, you know, pigmented and too painty, go change it. Great. Do it. Pause this, go get new water. Do what you need to do. All right. I'm gonna use some white here. And I'm bringing in white. Some of this here, this little yellow area is still wet. And my intention is just to keep bringing in white so it's fairly um, it's fairly wet paint, so it's fairly watered down, but there's a good amount of it on the brush, you can see. And that good amount kind of will go down and you'll have a big clumps of it. And once you have those big clumps, you can keep pulling, pulling them in different directions. And as you mix down this blue, as you can see, it's still a little, a little damp. So then when you mix it with the white, it's going to mix in. As you move down, it'll get more blue because it's just picking up more blue. And so that's giving us this natural gradation here. And while you're listening to me, I'm listening to a playlist. <laughs> So I will share that on, on Spotify if you're interested in, uh, you know, listening along to what I'm listening to. All right. So next I'm taking some of the dark green and 
it's fairly wet. And I'm just moving my brush kind of murp, 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 murp. That's a professional term. Definitely learned that in art school. So because this is a little bit wet and this is super wet, it's just picking up hints of that. Murp, 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 murp. <laughs> Definitely not art school. All right. So the other trick is that I'm using my playlist to help keep time so that I know how long I'm going. I'm gonna let that go down. I like that. Those little greens. So I'm gonna bring in more of that because I'm liking that drip. All right, that's fun. Bring some over here. And again, there's no right way to do this because so much of it is letting the paint be what it is. And it's just gonna kind of do what it do what it does and mix depending on how wet or dry the paint it comes across is. And again, if you get kind of stuck on those borders, give it a tap. Like here, it's kind of stuck on that border. All right. Every now and then you will probably want clean water, especially because I'm going to be going into the sky again. And since I've been using so much of that dark green and black color, it actually discolors those. So I'm taking some more white, bringing it back into our circle. Okay. And then a hint of the the magenta and the ochre together. And with this, I'm actually starting kind of at that mountain V. And I'm going over these green guys, but that's okay. It's all still texture. And we're gonna put a big, so this is just straight ochre. And you'll see how it's really mixing with the wet paint that's already there to bring in this nice ochre and mix some white here. So now I'm taking white and putting it over that ochre on this edge here that we just added. So you'll see it kind of mixes the white and the yellow on the canvas. And we're bringing it back along that side. There we go. And then I'm gonna bring in a bit more of the magenta. I'm bringing that up. And you can mix this either way. I've decided to put my dark closer to the bottom or closer to what would be the ground where I'm letting it get lighter as it goes up. So this one right here, this green guy, is very wet still. So I'm doing my best to avoid touching it, but if you do touch it, it's just gonna kinda go out and blend in with friends. And if that's what he wanted to do, he's allowed to make friends. So bringing out a bit of water. And I like this kind of called this light over here. So I'm really just adding a hint of water to bring that other pink in just so it's a smooth layer of pink. Cool. Oh, I'm liking this. 
All right. So now back to here. This feels like water, which I'm liking. And since it is water, if we take just a hint of the yellow and pink, the pink is the magenta, I'm just calling it pink, just so you don't think I added in a new color on you. So I have that hint mix of both of them. I'm just doing a few lines here. So if you have like an open spot between your drips that you can throw in a little bit of that, it's just giving the light imp uh, implication, I guess, of um, a little bit of pure magenta in there on just like one of the edges of the wet that you just put down. Because if you just bring it in on a side like that, it'll give you this shift that looks watery, which is what we want because we're trying to emphasize a bit of reflection from the sky. Okay. We're going to make this leaves. And you're like, Carly, why don't you just make it leaves to beginning in the beginning and then you would know. Yeah, that's not how this works. It's magic because you figure it out as you go. All right, so right now I'm just taking my tan and kind of going over some of those shapes that I made earlier, but I'm just going over them with other um, pointy ovals or a leaf shape <laughs> or a generic leaf shape I should say because leaves obviously come in so many different shapes and kind of filling them in you don't have to fill them in entirely sometimes I think it's nice to leave these hints of background again it adds more depth and clearly this isn't a realistic image that we're making, so it doesn't matter. Like a symbolic landscape. Okay. All right, we're gonna let that dry. And while that's doing that, we're going to bring in our last brush, which is this guy. Oh no, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> I took off the, the lid of my brush and it took off the entire top of my brush, so <laughs> ignore that. Um, try this guy. Are you gonna all come off too? Good, there we go. Okay, so I just have a thinner pointed brush. It doesn't have to be this thin, but we want something that can give us a decent fine line. You'll find that with painting, um, canvas matters, but it's not you can still work and create nice stuff on bad canvas. Paints matter, you can still do decent with not great paints, but brushes you'll find really matter. So what I'm gonna do with these little guys, we have black now, just going down the tree. Oh yeah, these are gonna be time trees now, I've decided. So I'm simply taking that black, or green, it was green, and I'm just bringing them up to a point. Most of these are still going to be wet, I assume. Mine are, so I would think if you're doing this along with me, yours are probably still wet too. And once you get these little points, you just up, up brushes. Okay. 
especially with pine trees, the leaves go up. You feel, you tend to think they don't because there's sort of that Christmas tree icon where they go down like this. But that's not how pine trees actually look. So when you're using really, really thin brushes like this, you'll find they don't carry a lot of water or a lot of pigment. So now I've added this bit of paint and pigment on the stem here. And you can pull that out just different. I'm making just weird little, um, just giving it a bit of direction. So it can go down or up or over or up. This gives that variety to make it look more natural. And then theoretically, they usually get a little wider as you go down. Don't stress these little branches. We're just, they'll all blend together. We're just bringing in our fine, finer points now. We're waiting for the sky to dry. <laughs> All right, so again, these little guys coming out. I'm using black because it, if this is our light source here and it's kind of dawn or dusk, which it would likely be if that's the color of the sky and where the position of, of the sun is, then these are gonna be fairly dark because they're making a shadow because the light is behind them. So you see it's just a lot of these little, little up brush strokes. I just pulled in some white that wasn't intentional, it's just left from this bar. That's fine, gives it some highlights. There's never anything to stress. <laughs> never anything to stress about with this process. You're doing it because you enjoy painting and we're we're just enjoying a nice moment together. Here you go. And you'll notice in places like here where it's really wet, you'll get less fine lines because it's spreading out among that dam. But again, that's totally fine. So... All right, we're getting there. So yeah, we're just bringing these out. And you can also do it from this direction if that's easier for you. I just, I'm so used to working on them from so many different directions. You can also just kind of do this, um, almost like an infinity sign kind of, but tilting up. And that'll give you a similar ups and downs chaos. The thing you learn about I think especially landscapes, is you can really use implied line to your advantage. People know what certain things are supposed to look like, and so they'll take an implied version of it fairly readily. So for example, you know, these aren't the most realistic trees, but you definitely know they're trees. And you'll notice I've done both sides differently with two different techniques. And that just gives you a chance to kind of play and see which way you like doing it better. Because once you do this, you can, you know, you can pull any of this you want, mix different colors, and try to do your own stuff. 
I think once the initial intimidation of just, oh my gosh, it's art, and you just play and <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. And once you get past that initial intimidation, it, it's very enjoyable. So often we're told that we're not creative or there's things that, you know, we can't do or we, you know, a lot of times we're limited in our creativity because other people don't value it or other people don't, don't see that you have creative potential, but you do. You have all sorts of creative potential. And so this is one way that we're finding it together. So I'm going back over it with these guys and just adding a bit of those light loopies to unify the style. And in turn, I'm going over here and we'll just add a few of these straight up that the other trees have. Okay, and then in the back here, we're going to add, we're almost done here. So that's just a light layer of the yellow, and then we're getting some white. And we're starting that in the middle and going out. And then they'll both meet. And you'll get some gradation like that. Ta-da, see, you're awesome, you've got this. All right, a few more details. We're taking the, this middle guy brush. And what do you got? So I've mixed the green and the magenta, and that gives us this brown, brownish color. And what we're doing with that is we're taking up here, and I just got off some excess on the paper towel. That's what it's for, and it's awesome. We're just making some angles on these mountains. Nothing too... Um, you know, just is. Throwing this guy down. And if you feel like you've overdone it with the brown, great. Take some of the blue, bring that in. And all we're doing is creating those sort of natural rolls and valleys or <laughs> mountain creases, that's not what they're called. But you'll find if you keep it on one angle like that where these are all going the same direction And then pull it down with some blue. That gives us a little more texture to our mountains. Put some of that over here. Now, if I had planned what I was doing, I would do all of the mountains first. And then, if you're planning a painting, the best way to do it is start in the background and work to the foreground because then you don't have to do anything kind of inconvenient like try to go around these trees that already exist. But if you don't really know what you're doing until part way through, you're going to have this sometimes where you need to, to work the background around the foreground. It's just not the easiest or most convenient way to do it. All right, so next I'm gonna put a little more White and pink. 
this white and pink here. And all this is doing, you'll notice some of these colors are a little translucent than others. We're just adding another layer of, of the pink to increase the richness of the sky by adding a little bit more color variety to it. Great. Then we have these fun leaves in the foreground and what are we gonna do with them? Make them leaves. So. But we're gonna make them maybe a little fallish, some of them. So you I'm taking several different colors here. I'm gonna do some that are the magenta and yellow, which is what this color mixes. These are now our little foreground leaves. Here we have the yellow and the green. You'll notice I'm being fairly loose with my painting. I'm not getting particularly precise. And that's because this part is just adding hints of color to what these are instead of the defining features. So it can be messy, it's fine. Okay, and put you there. Yeah, we'll just kinda Cover up all the rest of this because we're just making out all leaves now. So that's gonna dry. As that's drying, I'm putting some final touches on some of the other parts. And so again, this is our medium one. We're taking a bit of the green and we're going over some of that black. Because it's not black, but it's still very dark, you'll get those strokes, but it'll give you this translucency, which makes it seem different. <laughs> because the light, um, the light will go through different branches differently and create different opacities in real life. And so we're trying to kind of emulate or imply that. And you'll find with all of these messy strokes, it gives you a very fun painterly feel. And then when you go through and add just a few specific detailed fine lines, that it pulls it all together. We're almost to that part. So here we go. Okay, so now I'm pulling in, we're doing a hint of the purple that we used earlier, so that's the magenta and the teal. And what we're just doing is, we're just making some small, lines that kind of match angles of the mountain here. They aren't specific, they don't have to be. 
landscapes have these natural shadows and highlights. It's just part of um, the geographic makeup. How are you guys? You're, you're getting there. All right. So again, we'll use the middle size brush. A bit damp. I'm using the black again because we're creating a kind of an outline, basically. So I find it's good to dab it on the paper towel because you know how much you're getting. Again, these are just brush strokes I'm making with not the width, but like this. So they're narrow, pew, like that. The sound effect isn't required. That's just my gift. And as you'll see, there's still parts that are a little damp, and so the black will merge with them a little bit, but again, great. It's just paint doing what paint does. And then we're adding the leaves, so middle and our little sides here. Just grab more paint to fill your brush as you go. And some of this I'm sure I do <laughs> quicker. Um, it's just because I feel more comfortable and confident with the brush. It's not, um, you know, it's okay if this takes you a little longer. It's okay if you have to pause it and kind of relax and catch up or whatever. Go for it, do what you need to do. But I know that you can definitely paint this. Because as long as you try, whatever you end up with, you did it. That's awesome. Okay. So we're gonna finish up these leaves and then add a few more just little detail accents and then it's done. Okay, so this is the middle brush. I'm still just adding a little bit of the yellow to reflect on the water for the sun. Still the middle brush. We're getting some black and we're just bringing in some of those similar lines we did on the tree itself. And we're just creating a sort of brush. And the same thing over here. Just letting it sort of fill out this with implied, you know, implied grass. Um, Bushes, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> whatever makes up nature. In these little places like this, I'm just going to get some water and bring it down. And you'll see the water just helps it 
fill in that bit in a in natural way where it doesn't feel like there's just a, a stop of color. And if we want to be crazy, we can take our little thin guy. And we can throw in just a couple of these guys that feel like little birds, if you want. They have a little friend over here. And I'm going to throw in, so it's a hint of the white and a little bit of the yellow. And we're just gonna go on the edges of a, just a couple of the tree branches. So kind of bring in here. All we're doing, it's just adding a bit of highlight to some of these because things that are backlit, you'll find sometimes have just that hint of kind of a glow around them almost with the way that the light will go through. And so we're just playing with that. A couple more. And these are all very um, light, just Weird wiggle brush strokes. All right. And there you go. Ta ta. ta <laughs> there you go. Ta da. We did it. We made this. So that was fun. I had no idea what it was gonna be. Apparently it's some mountains and pine trees. So, and a little hidden lake. So I hope you enjoyed the process and thank you so much for joining me. I hope to do more of these. Let me know if there's a theme you would like me to, to try and we can intuitively do it together. Thanks much, bye.